Dr. Christine Lee Healy, and I'm a board-certified rheumatologist. I have treated patients with arthritis and autoimmune disease for over a decade, and some of the most common questions I get on a daily basis are, what foods should I eat to help my condition? What kind of diet is recommended to help with my joint pain? While there are no major clinical trials that have addressed this, I have begun to research these questions which are so important to my patients. Based on the medical literature we have available, I really believe in the power of food choices. And not only have I developed recommendations, but I've also incorporated these into delicious recipes to share with you. Last time we discussed the information and evidence there is for eliminating nightshade vegetables from your diet and what those vegetables are. If you are sensitive to solanine, which is found in nightshade vegetables, avoiding them may help your joint pain. Today I want to discuss how we think solanine, on a cellular level, can affect muscle and nerves to cause this joint pain. So under normal circumstances, when your body wants to move around, the brain sends signals by way of nerves, telling the leg muscle to contract and release, contract and release, such as for walking. What is actually happening is that the nerves release a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction, which causes the muscle to contract. The nerves then signal the muscle to stop contracting by releasing an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase, which breaks down the acetylcholine so it stops stimulating the muscle. Without acetylcholine, the muscle stops contracting and relaxes. Now let's look at what happens when solanine, which is the chemical in nightshade vegetables, is present in the body. When solanine is in the body, the process starts out the same. To move the leg, the nerves release acetylcholine into the leg muscle and the muscle contracts. When the muscle has fully contracted, the nerve releases acetylcholinesterase to break down the acetylcholine to stop the contraction. This is where we theorize solanine gets in the way. Solanine is a cholinesterase inhibitor. It actually stops acetylcholinesterase from doing its job, so the muscle can't relax fully after it has contracted, causing prolonged muscle spasms and contractions. Arthritis patients who already have baseline pain can potentially feel more muscle and joint stiffness after sleep or prolonged rest with solanine in their system. What are some other ways of eliminating nightshade vegetables from your diet? Come into my kitchen, I'll show you how. Today I'm making a variation of a popular well-known dish, stuffed bell peppers. Now bell peppers are a nightshade vegetable, so I want to show you how you can still make this cool dish, but this time with acorn squash. Acorn squash is a really cute vegetable. You can find it easily at any grocery store. And it has this like decorative, fancy feeling, and so I love making this dish when I have dinner guests for parties. It has really great texture, and it's gonna taste really good with my turkey quinoa stuffing. So I'm gonna get started on my stuffing. I have here a half a pound of organic ground turkey browning up, and it's almost, all cooked through, so I'm going to add a half a cup of diced onion and also a half a cup of diced celery. Now you could substitute with any vegetables that you have on hand in the refrigerator. You could use a diced up zucchini that works really well or diced up fennel or carrots, even green beans work well. You just want to stay away from nightshade vegetables. So I'm just going to saute this for a few minutes, and meanwhile, in this pot, I have a cup of quinoa that I've been steaming up according to the package directions. Now, usually stuffed peppers have either rice or um, breadcrumbs in it. I tend to use quinoa because it makes me feel lighter after the meal. I don't feel as heavy as if I've used rice or breadcrumbs for it. So I'm just going to keep stirring this up until my vegetables are translucent, and that takes maybe five more minutes. So I'll just keep cooking this up, and then we'll be on our way. 
Okay, so I'm ready to assemble my stuffing now. I've got my cup of cooked quinoa. I'm just going to add that to my ground turkey and uh, cooked vegetables. I'm going to add to this two tablespoons of chopped parsley and a quarter cup of dried cranberries and also a quarter cup of toasted pine nuts. That adds great crunch. And I'm just going to stir this up until really well combined. Okay, and I have my acorn squash here, which I've washed, okay, and I've cut the tops off, and I've taken the seeds and pulp out. I've also sliced off a small chunk of the bottom so that it's really stable on the baking sheet. I'm gonna just stuff this now, and you wanna put a whole bunch in there, it actually holds quite a bit, until it's heaped up to the top. Because remember, this is one meal per person. Okay, now some people like their acorn squash savory, some people like it on the sweeter side. I tend to love acorn squash on the sweeter side, and that's why I added my dried cranberries. That adds a sweetness to it, and it's almost like it's a mini Thanksgiving meal all in one. You've got your turkey, your stuffing, your cranberries, and then the squash of course tastes like pumpkin. So. It's like a mini Thanksgiving meal all in this cute little basket. So I'm just going to put the tops back on and I'm going to put this on a lined baking sheet and put it in a 400 degree oven for one hour. It's really simple. It's easy and fun to think of ways to substitute nightshade vegetables with alternatives in your cooking. It just takes a little thought and preparation. I have this beautiful acorn squash with delicious turkey quinoa stuffing and a side of steamed sugar snap peas, which is a creative variation to the traditional stuffed pepper. I'm Dr. Christine Lee Healy, and these are cooking points for healthy joints. Mm -hmm.